Hey! <laughs> well, not necessarily new, but I get, it, it was new back in October. I guess that's one way to put it. But yeah, hi, we're back. Oh, well, we had an episode zero. But anyways, yeah, hi. This is another episode of Spit and Shit with the Bros slash The Bros Cat. What a great name. <laughs> totally original. But um, yeah, so a, a couple hours ago, I made a community post on my YouTube channel saying, hey, I got a, we've got a little podcast going that me, me and Zach and you know just threw it out there just in case there's anybody from my channel that wanted to see what i'm doing currently or just hang out and see what we want to talk about in this podcast so if you're from that post or you know came from there hi welcome <laughs> but uh where do i go with this yeah i don't know it's just been a few months since we've recorded an episode of this just because we've been kind of doing our own you know just kind of not really thinking about it yeah, doing our own thing, yeah, just kind of off and about. And I'm forewarning, I'm using a microphone, headset microphone that isn't super good. And I'm also using it on the toaster PC, so my voice either might cut out or I might drop the call. But other than that, we should be good to go. And uh, yeah, so if you're new to this, basically what we're doing here is we just chit chat. We uh, pre-select some topics before the episode, and we discuss them. And this time we've got... One second. I'm, in, I'm stupid and can't count. <laughs> we have uh, eight topics. Uh, three that I picked, three that he picked, and two topics that we kind of both picked. So, yeah. And I think the first thing we should start with, besides Zach looking in the camera like he's going to, you know, eat a nice, juicy steak... Uh, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and talk about um, what's going on with the live streams that Zach's been doing because uh, in case you didn't know this man right here he does a lot of YouTube content and he's also been doing Twitch content and uh, we were doing uh, I was playing with him while he was streaming uh, spend co-op we were doing some stuff like that and he was also streaming other things but um, yeah there's a little bit of a kink in that and I'm gonna let Zach explain it since it well, you know, he's the one who's doing the streaming. Off to you while I drink my Canada Dry. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah so basically to, just a short just a short summary of what happened uh basically they hit their data cap uh zach and people he's living with so um they gave they gave him some shit for it of course you know but um they naturally have their own hand in it but um because of that like Zach said, he's going to try to set up a schedule or just be like, hey, I'm going to pick or just let everybody know, yo, I'm going to stream these days and this is what I'm going to stream on these days. Come be here when I do it. Da -da 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 -da. We'll do it for a certain amount of time. And of course, I'm not always going to be part of those streams. I'm only there for multiplayer shit typically because Zach does do solo streams as well. So be sure to check those out if you want to. And I'm pretty sure he has his Twitch linked somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where. <coughs> Excuse me, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my lord! Yeah, see that that was another thing is that we were streaming for, or he was streaming, and I we, I was up with him for a while, 
And I was like, yo, I can't, I cannot be up this late all the time. <laughs> so we gotta like, yeah, and which we're gonna do more of, by the way, if because there are some folks who uh, have been enjoying those streams. So yeah, we'll be doing more of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, we won't we won't get into that, but um yeah, we'll be doing more of that. And as a side note to this, this is a little unrelated, but uh, actually, wait, what? I, you know what? Continue with what you were going to say. I completely lost what I was about to say. <laughs> Yeah, um, because we've done Cry of Fear, Afraid of Monsters, and um, I feel like in terms of co-op streams, that's what we've done. Uh, I, I don't think, yeah, I think that's all we've done. And, uh, oh, They Hunger as well, I think, right? Didn't we do They Hunger, or is that something that, okay. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. But, um... Well, he'll definitely be able to stream some more games once my ass gets a, gets a better gets some better hardware. Because <laughs> uh, I already know that we are definitely going to be playing Halo Reach a fair bit and other Halo games. Because I, oh man, I can't wait to play MCC. That and uh, Doom Eternal. <laughs> so, um, some battle mode. Oh man, that would be fun. I would love to play Battle Mode with you. <laughs> the other, um, the other Doom twenty, the the Doom twenty sixteen multiplayer was kind of, but but yeah, whatever. Not not part of the topic. So just letting everyone know that's the whole deal for the live stream there. Or live streams in general, because I, I imagine there, because I think there is a couple people that are like, yo, when are you going to stream again? Regards to him. And, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's only played. He's only played the original Smash. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh lord, yeah. Firefight's definitely um Firefight's one thing I really want to do with you. If they have a if you're able to do custom lobbies in Firefight, because Firefight is a load of fun in my opinion. But um so short summary of that. Scheduled live streams, something he's gonna attempt to do. Uh Gonna be taking a break for a bit, of course, while he figures that out, and I'll probably help a bit. <laughs> probably, keyword. <laughs> Oops, sorry. And, um, yeah, and if you want to request a certain game for a solo stream or co-op thing, you know, just let them know. Oh, I keep hitting the microphone, sorry. But, um, yeah, um, 
I, we do have a couple ideas for things that we can do currently regarding to my hardware. So we might do some of those at some point. We'll see. But um, yeah, got everything covered in regards to that? Or you got anything else in mind? Xandronum. Yeah. Yeah, that could be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to play multiplayer Doom, the best way to do it is with Xandrana. But if you want if you want to if you want a more vanilla experience, use something like PR Boom Plus or Chocolate Doom. But if you don't really care about retaining original vanilla and you're playing mostly for mods, do Xandronum or GZ Doom slash LZ Doom. That's your best bet. <laughs> you can use you could use Doc's box, but it's you know, or you could use the new um, Unity port that uh, Bethesda did. Was it Unity? I think it was Unity. I don't remember. But uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, we uh, uh, we definitely need to get back to do some Metroid Dreadnought in return. In, <laughs> I can't talk in regards to the recording series, and we've also been doing uh, CF Nexus as of late. We did Good Morning Phobos, and we're currently. Hey, look, <laughs> I played like four wads with Nexus. I am like, whoo, I'm. <laughs> uh, so. We're going to do more JPCP because we got to finish that. Jerry's mod. Oh, my Lord. All right. Anyways, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But that's pretty much the summary of that. Uh, do you want to go ahead and pick another topic or would you like me to go on to something else? Go ahead. Definitely on the platter. There's a lot of games in mind that I would like to be involved with in a multiplayer stream. Because, yeah, you know, I don't know, maybe Original Killing Floor, Terraria. There's a lot of stuff, you know, there's a lot of stuff we could have fun with. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. He was. Can confirm. He really was. Exactly. Oh, oh yeah, and and as a side note, before the video is released, I'll make sure to uh, timestamp everything, and that'll be included in the description or in a comment. So if you want to jump around in the video, you can. But uh, all right, do you want me to pick something or do you want to go next? <laughs> Prime 4. <laughs> okay, so one of the topics I wrote down earlier was, are we getting a Metroid game this year? And uh, well, of course, it's, it's me. And if you know me, I love Metroid. And it is a new year. It is, it is, yeah, exactly. And it is a new year, it's 2021. And I was thinking the other day, I'm like, hmm, are we going to get a new Metroid game this year? And personally, even though I said this last year, <laughs> I think we will, but I don't think it's going to be what most people are expecting. Like, to me, I'm kind of seeing that there's going to be, it's not going to be Prime 4. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't expect to see anything about Prime 4 until next year, 2022. I don't, I... I don't know what it is. It's just I'm kind of like, yeah, I don't know. I don't see it happening. And Zach is making a crazy face. <laughs> uh, 
Oh no, yeah. But Prime Four, as much as I would love to see like a trailer or something, I don't see it. Honestly, what's up? Go ahead. Yeah, see, that was something I also thought about because that's been rumored for at least two years at this point. Is that oh, Nintendo has a has a whole little bundle? They have they have Metroid Prime trilogy ready to go. They can just push out any time, and it's like, I mean, I could see it, but at the same time, you can still buy the trilogy on Wii U, you know. And I'm not, no, hear, hear me out. I'm not saying that I don't want it on Switch. I would love it on Switch, especially if they implemented like gyro controls with the Switch or like the Pro Controller or whatever. But I don't know if it'll happen as much as I want it to happen. I would, I would love to replay the three game, you know, the whole trilogy with like gyro or just like a more modern version of the old sort of tank control style from Prime 1 and Prime 2. Just, I want to replay the games. <laughs> That'd be real. Hmm. Like a port or a remake? What do you think? Port. Like a remaster, in a sense. Yeah, um... Honestly, I would love it, because I'm one of the few people who really like Metroid Prime Hunters, but I don't see it happening because it's very niche. Like, it's really niche even for Metroid. Like, not a lot of people know about Metroid Prime Hunters. But um, who knows, maybe if Prime 4 does well and Silex is in the game, as you know, which has been rumored for a long time now, uh, you never know, maybe they'll be like, huh, how about we try to bring back Prime Hunters or like we make a sequel to Prime Hunters where it's just a purely multiplayer game. You know, that'd be cool. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had a Canada Drive. Uh, yeah, well, Prime Hunters is already very quake and... That's a good thing, in my opinion, because Quake multiplayer is very good. <sighs> George. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Yep. But, um, yeah, I would love a port. I'd take a port. I would personally prefer either a remaster or a uh, to Hunters, but ports probably most likely if they were to do that, but I don't see it happening. My prediction, you've been throwing out predictions, let me throw out mine, is that we are going to get a Metroid game this year, but it's going to be another remake. Guarantee it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be Super Metroid. It's kind of my hunch. Oh, really? Where'd you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> the face you made! Oh, I read it. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll have to look it up. I'm not gonna look at it right now because I don't, I don't really care about Zelda. It's a maybe. Yeah, it's a rumor. I guess that's the only way we could put it, but... Uh... Well, Zelda's 35th anniversary is this year, along with Metroid's, which uh, I could tell you which one's going to get a whole little shing dig. It's going to be Zelda, and Metroid is probably going to get like a little passing fart in the wind, as I mentioned. So, <laughs> yeah. But, um... Well, I mean, Trilogy, I think, was for one of the anniversaries. So that's why I'm thinking they're going to remake Super Metroid. It's probably going to be remade by Mercury Steam, the folks who did Samus Returns. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty good. Probably be very faithful to the original game. But it's not going to sail a ton. Sail a ton? Sell a ton. Because it is a Metroid game. And I feel like... I, I kind of feel like... Super Metroid purists might not like it. Also, they were supposed to make a Fusion remake, but then Nintendo was like, hey, this is cool, but like, what about we remake the game that actually needs a remake instead of Fusion? And it's like, huh. I mean, yeah, fair enough. Honestly, I really enjoy Fusion, but I don't know... I don't really know how they could make it even better. 
like I don't know. To me, Fusion is one of the more polished Metroid, polished mesh. Oh my god, polished Metroid games in the series. It is uh, very linear, of course, but I think I don't know. The art style also works very well for it, given the uh, the age of the the game and the system it's on. I don't know. It'd be tough to remake that, I think. <laughs> it's okay. I don't blame you. Um, yeah, I don't know. So my prediction is that we're getting a Sam uh, a uh, Super Metroid remake. I'm pretty sure. Prime uh, Prime trilogy, maybe. Uh, Prime Four, no. <laughs> I don't even expect a trailer. I'm gonna be honest with you. Prime Four is probably gonna be coming out next year, or not even next year. Maybe fucking early 2023 at the most. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I, I, I mean, it'd be pretty cool if they, like, look. Don't get me wrong. I could be entirely wrong. They could have a trailer for Prime Four, but uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah, due to the fact that COVID's going on, and um, or as I like to call it, Coroni, <laughs> due to the fact Coroni is going on, and um, just the fact that they've only been working on the game for like what, almost two years at this point, I think something like that. I don't really remember. Um, I don't know if there'll be much to show for it yet. I think Zach just hit himself in the nut. You hit yourself in the nuts. What'd you do? Oh my god! Smooth moves. Bro, <laughs> I don't need to know that. Oh my god. Okay, but that's. I think that's all. I, that's all I've got to say about that. Uh, you have anything else to add? Hmm. Yeah, you're I, actually. I think you're right. I don't think Fusion has a difficulty selection. I think it's just one thing. Zero Mission has a difficulty selection. I think it has easy, normal, and hard. But yeah, huh? That's a good idea. I, that's actually one thing they can improve. I, a difficulty option. Yeah, easy, normal, hard. That'd be cool. Because Fusion is pretty difficult, all things considered. Like, or it, it, it can be. It can be. It's not super difficult, but like, I think the most difficult Metroid game is probably. Probably um, uh, Samus Returns, honestly. And Prime 2 goes up there. Like, original release Prime 2. Oh, my God. <laughs> that game is difficult. But um, Samus Returns is definitely the most difficult, I'd say. Even over Prime 2, just because of the way the combat is structured and everything. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much wrapped up on that. I could be talking about Metroid till the fucking cows come home. So <laughs> let's let's change the subject. As much as I love to talk about it, let's change the subject. Well, you uh, you 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 picked you picked Metroid, so I guess I can pick one. Okay. Well, let's see. Someone is pinging me. Who the fuck? <laughs> uh, let's talk about uh. Let's talk about Dino Crisis, because I, I actually don't know much about this series, but um, this is Zach's domain. I'm going to let him primarily talk here. I'm going to just kind of, you know what? I'm going to Google it while we sit here. I'm going to look at it. <laughs> All right. Off of the wind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Yes, spasmonic 84 and electric dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's created by it's created by Shinji Mikami. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The last Dino Crisis game to come out was in 2003, and it was uh, the third game. Yeah. That is a little weird, given the fact that this is, what, a survival horror and action adventure? Yeah, survival horror and action adventure series, yeah. Hmm. A little odd, <laughs> but all right. Suppose. Yeah, I can believe it. It does seem a little funk. Mm hmm. Oh, Lordy. Ugh. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh. Now, as a side note, to butt in here, I'm not trying to interrupt you, but basically, we're talking, he, discussing Dino Crisis, because, well, obviously, there hasn't been a game since 2003. <laughs> and Zach is a fan of this series, personally. I have no experience with it, but it does look pretty interesting, we'll give it that, because I'm doing a little bit of research while I'm listening to you. And, hmm. Yeah, interesting shit in here. I bet. And I was going to say, another reason we brought this up, as I said, because the last game was in 2003, is kind of like, hey, what if they make a remake of the first game? Or, like, they bring back the series and they do a fourth game or something. Um, honestly, I feel like what would benefit the most here would be, like, a remake. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like a remake. Like a, like a Resident Evil 2 remake-styled remake of the first game. I think that'd be really cool. Excuse me. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm mm hmm <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm Here's an interesting thing to talk about. I don't know if you heard about this or not, 
because uh, this was posted in June. This is an article from Tech Raptor. I've never heard of this website, but I do know what they're talking about because it's a video. And uh, it is from Digino Gaming. I'm sure you've heard of that channel. If not, well, they're a pretty popular channel. Uh, they usually have, I think they have a new series, or not really new at this point. It's like Game History or something like that. And basically, there was an episode on Dead Rising, right? And according to this article and this video, which I was listening to while you were speaking, uh, there was actually a remake of the, the first game that was pitched to Capcom. And, or, yeah, pitched to Capcom. And it would have been developed by Capcom Vancouver. Uh, that studio. Now, the thing is, that studio doesn't exist anymore. Sadly, it was killed. But basically, these are the folks that were behind uh, the Dead Rising games, basically. And they were like, yo, let's, let's, we should remake the original game. Here, let me go ahead and uh, read the quote here. And I think it's from Liam Robertson, who's a really good, uh, I don't know what you consider him a journalist or is a YouTube creator. A little bit of both. Basically, the Vancouver branch then attempted to revive survival horror series Dino Crisis with a new game for modern. Lee and Robertson said in the video, "This endeavor never advanced beyond the pitching phase, being shot down by Capcom Japan after a few months of work." Speaking to several former Capcom Vancouver employees, they indicated that it would have involved an investment in new technology in new technology to make a Dino Crisis remake work on modern systems. Unfortunately, Capcom's Japanese branch was unwilling to make the investment. So, it got shot down very early, but it was something that was pitched, and it was from Capcom Vancouver. Coop Vancouver. Vancouver, of all people. I don't know if you've heard of that or not, but, huh. That's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. There were several other projects that were planned by Vancouver and never released. Unfortunately, the decision was made to close down the studio and pretty much killed any chances of us seeing anything in the near future. The closure of, the closure of it obviously killed the chances then, but we, we may still see a remake of this great survival horror game at some point in the future. It's entirely possible. Like, honestly, I feel like if they want to bring back Dino Crisis, it's the best bet to remake the first game and go from there. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. And as mentioned in the article here, they, you know, Capcom has been doing the Resident Evil remakes. And they're like, you know, hey, with the momentum from those games, it could show even more uh, demand for survival horror games. And that'd be a perfect way to bring back Dino Crisis. So. Honestly, I hope it happens, even though I don't have any, I don't, I've never played any of the games, and I only know of them through Zack, you know, like how he knows Metroid through me, right? But yeah, I honestly hope that they, uh, that they remake this, just so more, uh, a more modern audience can get a try, get a little stab at it, and like, old fans of the series can be like, oh shit, there's a new Dino Crisis game. <laughs> that would be nice. Well, if it was a modern remake, similar to the other uh, remakes from Resident Evil, it would be on uh, the new systems and PC. So I could, yeah, I could see that happening. Uh, honestly, I hope that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's probably the easiest way to look it up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looking at some screenshots here, that's definitely what it looks like. It's, it look, does it have a fixed camera perspective? I'm going to assume it does. So it's a fixed camera. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. 
Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So well, here, well, here's the question for you, since you're the guy, you're the Dino Crisis expert here. First game was very much like a Resident Evil game. Second game, from what you just said, there's some arcade elements into it, or is it like a, or is it like an entirely different game? Mm, okay. Right. So you say it's still a survival horror game, but it has some gamey stuff in it, basically. Hmm. What about the third game? Jo I, like, I... S I saw a couple images for the third game, and it looks weird. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> it looks kind of strange, not gonna lie. Did you just say space mutated dinosaur? What the fuck? You're in space? What? What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 First question. One, why the fuck would you do that? Who 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 thinks that would be a good idea for a survival horror? What? <laughs> what? I do blame Capcom. That is bizarre. Why would you do that? It sounded like they wanted to take it in more like a more action focused direction or something. Oh god, really? That sounds weird. If you're talking about like the if you're talking about like the gameplay of Other M, yeah, that I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> gameplay huh. Huh. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Um Okay. Mm hmm So um hmm. Wow. No wonder the series just kind of fell off the face of the planet because they kind of just made a really weird game that sounds cool but like it doesn't sound like a proper sequel yeah 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 like i it, it i don't think it should have been a dino crisis game as soon as you put space in the equation of a fucking survival horror game that's already look i know it already sounds very zany that you're fighting dinosaurs and shit so i guess that's not that far out there but I don't know. It just seems like a huge leap to put it in the future. And there's a fucking... You're in space fighting space mutated dino... What the fuck? <laughs> it sounds like a cool other game, but not like a Dino Crisis game. I don't know. That's weird. How do I feel about that? Yeah, Turok and Dino Crisis seem sort of simil similar in concept, but I think Turok is a first-person shooter, isn't it? Okay, that's what I thought. I've never played Turok, but I've heard good things about it. I know that much. I've heard good things. <laughs> so...
seems to be a reoccurring. It seems to. Oh no! Why? No! I'll reboot it. Ah! Oh, oh my lord! Okay, well that's the thing we can hope for. If, if they do do a Dino Crisis game, like a new one, is a remake styled like the Resident Evil ones, and it's not like a reboot. <laughs> that's all we can hope for. Reboots. Uh... Oh no! Oh no! Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, we'll 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 cover reboots and everything, but yeah. Ugh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I actually write some of these down uh, in the channel. I'll uh, write them down as ideas. All right. Hold on. Give me a second. I'll pick one. Give me a second. One. Actually, no, you can pick, because that's right, I picked the Dino Crisis thing, yeah. Oh, boy. Give me one fucking second. Give me one second. AVP is in, like, an AVP series discussion, or just, you know. Okay, I'll, I'll write down the ideas. I don't know if we planned or not. Anyways, okay, so. It was a good discussion, actually, I like that. Doom Eternal. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why is this dumbass talking about Doom Eternal? The game came out last year. It, it, it's going to be like a year old in a couple months. Look, motherfucker. <laughs> motherfucker. I wasn't able to play the game because I didn't have the hardware to do it PC-wise, and I didn't have a Xbox One or PS4 or one of the next-gen systems. I have a Nintendo Switch. So, if you may or may not know, the Switch version got delayed, and it came out near the end of the year. December 8th, I think, something like that. But I finally got my hands on it because I've been looking forward to that for a long time. I've been very excited to play that. And uh, I got it on Christmas, of course. And I was able to play it the next day, I think. But I, I think about a week or so ago, two weeks ago, I finished the game, first playthrough. I did Ultra Violence. And yeah, basically, this topic is I just, I don't want to, I just want to talk about it. Doom Eternal. My personal thoughts and just Zach's thoughts as well. And I gotta say, as much as I love Doom 2016, and I have a soft spot for that game because it's actually my first Doom game. I'm one of those people. I never played any Doom game before. That was my first Doom game was 2016. And I got into it because of uh, content creators on YouTube and just people saying like, oh, this game is so good. It's a very good FPS game. And I love FPS games. And you too. So I was like, okay, sure. I'll check it out. And uh, I got it on my PC at the time, and it ran kind of shit. <laughs> because I didn't really have a good GPU for it, and still don't. But uh, I I forced myself to play it. I uh, did a lot of optimization stuff, and I managed to get it running at like 20 to 30, which is not bad. Yeah, not great, but not bad. And I really enjoyed that game. So I played that, right? And then I went back and played the... Uh, I went back and bought the original games. And uh, I... Re I think, actually, I think Zach bought them for me, and then I wound up, uh, had those for a while, didn't touch them, but then when my computer shot the bed, I actually got into Classic Doom on the toaster, because you can, you know, you can run Doom on practically anything. But anyways, just side tangent, sorry. Doom Eternal is amazing, and I don't know if I can go back and play 2016. And it's not because Doom 2016 is bad, it's because Doom Eternal is so fucking addictive. It is so good. I cannot get over how good the game is. Like, I don't know... Well, I, I know how, but like, it's just crazy how much of a step up Doom Eternal is from Doom 2016. It's so much more engaging. Looks way better. Runs way better. And this is crazy. I'm playing this on the Switch version, right? I've only had one crash. One crash on one level. I had no other... No other issues otherwise, and it's been running at 30 frames, consistent, barely any frame drops. That's impressive for a Switch port, but yeah, 
I, I fucking love it. It's so good. And I really am looking forward to being able to play it on PC when I have the hardware to do so. Because as much as I love, as much as I really enjoy playing it on Switch, uh, you, there's nothing like playing Doom without a mouse and keyboard. Excuse me. It's just not the same. So I'm uh, fucking. Oh, I can't wait to just play that with this mouse and keyboard. It's going to be so good. And Zach, I don't know if, did you play it on launch day or did you play it like, um, I don't remember. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. So I know that Zach's a fan of it and me personally, it's just, oh, so good. I can't, I can't sing its praises, praises enough. What's up? Twenty seven years old. Oh, my God. Woo. Fuckers old. Yeah, and I'm one of those, I'm actually one of those, I'm, I'm actually one of many people that get into the series because of the, the, it's not really, is it a reboot? Would you consider Doom 2016 a reboot? Okay, well, we're going to call it Doom 4 or Doom 2016. I got into it because of that game. And just, yeah, I don't regret it. I've had a lot of experiences related to Doom. It's very much a part of my gaming uh, catalog now. Like, I play a lot of Doom. I do modding for Doom now, for fuck's sake. So, yeah, I it's definitely been a weird paradigm shift in the shit that I usually play often, like regular people. And I met a lot of cool people through it, so it's, yeah, means a lot to me. And Eternal, yeah, I'm addicted. <laughs> I wake up, I want to play Doom Eternal. I'm not playing Doom Eternal. I want to stop what I'm doing and go play Doom Eternal. I am that addicted to that fucking game. It's so good. And I'm enjoying it that much with a controller. When I get a mouse and keep ugh, my voice. When I get a mouse and keyboard, you're not gonna see me for like another year. I'll come back with this giant beard. I look like fucking Gandalf. <laughs> I've been playing Doom Eternal. Oh no, lumberjacks. Out. Yeah. But just if there, there's something I do want to bring up relating to Doom Eternal. And here's the thing: I've played on Ultraviolence. I'm currently doing another run on Ultraviolence with extra lives for a milestone. And I'm gonna be doing Nightmare soon and i'm hoping to do nightmare a couple times so i can play ultra nightmare and speaking of the game's difficulty that's part of what makes it so good in my opinion is that it's much more difficult and it actually requires your attention and you can't just run around using one weapon at a time. i think that's a really good now in regards to the difficulty what i want to talk about is the marauder because a lot of people don't like the marauder and for one and I'm here to just say why. Fucking why. The Marauder is such a good enemy, in my opinion. And here's why. Before I hear somebody go, Hee! Hee! Because the Jeff is the design philosophy of Doom Eternal. No, he doesn't. You know what he is? He's a modern-day archvile. You see him, you want to fight him and get rid of him as fast as possible. That's He's like a modern archvile. Look, don't get me wrong. The archvile's still in the game, right? He's great and all. But he's so much easier compared to the fucking Marauder, who hunts you down and he wants to steal your lunch money the entire time. So you're kind of forced to deal with him. Like, yeah, you can try and ignore him, but you're going to get a shotgun up the ass, or wolf, or, you know, a projectile. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm, I, yes, I'm one of the many people who struggled with him at first, and but I didn't hate him. And I think part of what it why I didn't hate him at first is because I had a lot of context. I heard a lot of negative things about him, and I'm kind of like... That's the thing. Well, here's the thing. If you're having trouble with the Marauder, basically what you need to do 
is you need to just experiment and stop being so uh, hard headed. Start stop being so hard headed and trying to do things a specific way. And it sounds mean to say that, right? But what I'm telling you is, let Doom push you into the fun zone. Try and use a different weapon. Try and use a different strategy against him. You want to hear the best strategy for the fuck I'm a marauder from what I've experienced? I'm not a professional, by the way. This is just my personal opinion. You get a, you get as far as you can from him. You bait his you bait him running at you. Because when he runs at you full speed ahead, he's pretty deadlocked. He usually won't dodge that often. Get him in melee range a, after the run charge, or like get get him to run towards you. He goes for the swing, hit him with an SSG or a ballista, right? And then either or, you swap to the SSG or the ballista, hit him again, right? Rinse, repeat. You can do that. Another way you can deal with him is remote detonation rockets. Those can actually stumble him. Those can actually hit him behind the shield. You can also use the BFG. And by that, I mean like, yeah, you know, what you can do is you can fire the BFG. Yeah, there's a couple strategies. Yes. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, it's less effective. But the thing is, if he has his shield up and you fire the BFG, he will focus on the BFG tracer. He can, you can make him expose his back to you. And if that's the case, you can fucking blood punch him shoot him in the ass with a ballista or you know light him up with the chain gun there is multiple strategies to deal with this man but everyone who complains about it is just I can't just use the rocket launcher and shoot him cons consistently I, 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 I can't not brain he is not hard <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's one way you get it. Yes. The wolf is very weak, though, which is good, because you can basically pop it from, like, a fair distance away with SSG and it'll die. It's not strong. Yeah, I always use SSG to get rid of the wolf. And now here's another thing. The wolf only gets summoned if you shoot the shield. So if you play cleanly enough, uh, he won't summon the wolf. You sh you'll be able to just deal with a mono a mono. <laughs> Good lord. Sorry for the sniffling, by the way. I'm congested. But yeah, what I usually do to deal with him is SSG ballista quick swaps. Hit him with an SSG. Swap the ballista. Hit him with a ballista. Swap back. Hit him with an SSG. You can get three fucking hits in. You can get three. You can kill him in like two cycles. You can even one cycle the Marauder if you're good enough. You can stun him, falter him with a grenade, stun him again, and you know, blood punch him. He's dead. You know? He's fucking dead. Now, that's the thing. You have to, basically, you need, to, <laughs> it sounds, again, uh, it sounds elitist and assholeish, but you just need to get good. That's all I gotta do. Just get good. Marauder is way, way easier. Yeah, that's a good way to practice is master levels. That is a good way. Even even the, ma the master levels can be a little buggy, but they're ac they are a good way to fight higher tier demons faster, because they usually show up more often in master levels. But, yeah. Honestly, the excuse me. Honestly, in my opinion, the best way to deal with him besides SSG Ballista is remote detonation rocket because they do chip damage. Yeah, I um and in fact earlier today I was playing uh I was playing on my uh, current run and I kicked the absolute shit out of a marauder. And it felt so good. Here's the thing. When you get when you practice enough and get good enough to kill a marauder with ease, it's going to feel very rewarding. There's nothing quite like it. It's very good.
Oh no. Is it the whiplash? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so here's another thing with Doom Eternal. They added a ton of demons, right? Including like I know I didn't really go over the whole scope of what Doom Eternal adds, but we're basically just I'm giving you my thoughts on it, and my thoughts are I fucking love it, okay? Let's talk about the whiplash. He's an absolute prick. Or she, actually. She's an absolute prick. Yeah. Uh here's the thing. She's a piece of shit, but she's also very easy to deal with. Once you know how to deal with it. Just like every enemy in the game. But she's still a fucking bitch. She's so annoying. Especially when there's like three of them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh ice bomb ice bomb is a hard counter. Mm. Really? I haven't actually tried that. See, here, see, this is the beauty of Doom Eternal, folks. I'm over here, I've played the game for almost 40 hours at this point, and Zach's like, he just told me... Yeah, a bit of a hiccup on his end. Technical difficulty. Um, yeah. Oh, shit. I actually completely lost my train of thought. We were talking about the whiplash? Yeah. Oh, I, oh, yeah. Okay. What I was saying was, that's the beauty of Doom Eternal, is that I've been playing the game for 40 hours, and Zach just told me something new I can try. I don't really use the Destroyer Blade that much. Now I want to try and use the Destroyer Blade to just fuck around with whiplash. <laughs> so. Oh, of course. Of course. Uh, yeah, you can do some. I imagine you could do some cool shit with it. Personally, I'm a believer of the Arbalist because I love having anti cacodemon slash pain elemental weapon. <laughs> Besides, uh, you know, grenades. What's up? Good, because I know the the uh, ballista does do bonus damage to flying enemies. So even then, you know, it's really good. So, yeah. nice. That's good. That's good. Now, oh, what? Okay, just we're we're we're, we're going to be covering a lot of Doom Eternal elements here. I just want to say, again, I love it. I highly recommend it to anybody who likes FPS games. If you think the game is being cheap, stop being stubborn actually try and follow the game's mechanics, listen to what it wants you to try and do, and give it your all. You'll have a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and another thing, another big thing, is quick weapon, quick swapping. There's so many people I've seen play this game that don't do weapon quick swap. Quick swap. It makes the game so much more fun because basically you can combo demons with guns. Don't you see how cool that is? <laughs> and you can combo them with grenade falters and shit and ice bomb. Yeah. And you can bind your own keys in the PC version. So fucking go ham. Make a cool setup where you can hit F to get a F to pull out your shotgun or something. I don't know. Go wild. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm one of those people. Controller is definitely restrictive, but it, you can still do a lot with it. I the hardest part is trying to do quick swapping, but you can you can still reliably do it. It's just you have to put more compared to PC where you can just hit a button. Um Here's the thing to me. I think Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare they're easy once you know how everything works. But the problem is learning.
Yeah, play ultra violence first. Like I think that's the best. That's like the baseline way to play the game. Like, now, look, you, we're not saying you have to play ultra violence to enjoy the game. If you want to play it on easier difficulty, go for it. Do what you want. Like my my dad tried Doom Eternal the other day, and you know he's he's much older right than me, and he doesn't really play a ton of FPS games anymore. We used to play a lot of Halo together, and he w- he went with the easiest difficulty, and he had a ton of fun. That's all that matters is having fun. So just have fun, you know? Yeah. Just, you know, it, have fun with the damn game. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, if you don't like the game because you can't just use one weapon like Doom 2016, hey, that's fair. Sorry you don't like it. That's totally fair. <laughs> Some games, see, see, that's the thing. You say that, but there are games where it's like people will find a weapon they really like and they'll just stick to it. And that's what's cool about Doom Eternal is that Doom Eternal is like, you know what? You can't do that. You can have a favorite weapon, but you need to use all the weapons. You can't just use the fucking overpowered shotgun. You can't just use the auto shotgun from Left 4 Dead 1 on everything. You need to use everything, which is really cool. That's such a good way to design an FPS game because it's really engaging. Puts you out of your comfort zone. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I don't want... And to go on to when you said, you know, how well, how I mentioned that some games are like, you know, you have a favorite weapon, you can go wild, basically. Even, let's say... Here's an example here. You know how there's some cases in some games where a weapon that you get completely outclasses another weapon you have and you don't use that older weapon because you have a weapon that basically just replaces Case in point, let's say Half-Life 2. Once you get something above the pistol, like the SMG or the AR or the shotgun, you never use the pistol. Or the Magnum. Excuse me. Yeah, that's, that's an example of a kind of a flawed... Yeah, and... Gravity gun and the crowbar. Yeah, gravity gun and the crowbar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah, the pistol... For example, in that game, the pistol isn't useless, of course. But the thing is, in the time... When you get better weapons in the game, nine times out of ten, you're going to be bouncing between the SMG, AR2, and the shotgun. That's usually how I play. And the reason I play that way is because that's just the weapons I prefer. And the game doesn't really push me to use anything else because you honestly don't need to. Especially with the dynamic uh, ammo resupply mechanic in the game where if you're completely out out of ammo on a weapon, it'll straight up just give you the fucking ammo you're missing further incentivizing you to just use the weapon you want to use. See what I mean? It's a bit of a backwards mechanic. Like, yeah, it's fun, but it's not as engaging as something like Doom Eternal, in my opinion. And Crossbow, yeah. And Crossbow is definitely the more reliable one, but Magnum is still really... (laughs) But to go back to Doom, yeah, to go back to Doom Eternal, we got on a side tangent, just relating to how the game feels. Um, real quick, I just want to go over a couple things before we end the discussion. Uh, go ahead. What do you want to say? Go right for it. Oof. Oof. Talk about an upgrade to a mod that used to be shit in Doom 2016. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's the problem with the, the precision scope for the Goss cannon in that game was the fact that Goss the siege mode existed. And siege mode is better in every way. <laughs> so and also the tactical scope for the um the tactical scope for the assault rifle in that game also wasn't very that good. 
wasn't very that good. Oh my god, wasn't really that good in my opinion. Yeah, you can use it. Yeah, you can use it, but the problem is, is that micro missiles are so much better. And I kind of feel like that's the opposite problem in Eternal. I feel like Precision Bolt is so much better than micro in the game, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, to see... Ah, it, it was kind of... It's cool, but it's flawed. And in Doom Eternal, they, the, the micro-missiles, I haven't really used them at all, honestly. <laughs> Precision Bolt is so much better in Doom Eternal. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Me personally, my the benefit for me, there's, there's two things I really like about it. One, the most obvious one, what uh damaging weak points on demons. Ratnatron's turret, Mancubus cannons, the revenant cannons, all that shit is so easy to take out with the precision bolt. It's amazing. And the other factor that I really like about it is comboing it with the rocket launch. I know that sounds crazy, but what I've been doing as of late is I scope in, shoot somebody with it, sw quick swap to rocket launcher, shoot rocket launcher, swap back, scope shot, rinse, repeat. Really strong, all things considered. Love it. Oh. What? What? Oh, man. Yeah. Dude, sticky the, the the fucking sticky bombs are stupidly useful in Eternal. Like, don't get me wrong, full auto is really cool, and it's actually pretty useful when you fully upgrade it. But oh my god, sticky bombs are so useful throughout the entire game. Entire game, it's good, so good. The fact that you're able to fire three of them before you have to wait for a cooldown makes it super. And then when you fully upgrade it, you get five. Five fucking grenades that you can fire like like that. It's so good. <laughs> um, and in regards to the weapons, actually, since we're talking about it, um, just for a fun little discussion, what's your favorite weapon in Doom Eternal? I I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah, SSG with the new. Yeah, ballista is also good too. Um, me personally. I agree. SSG is really good. And that sounds like a cop-out to people who don't know much about Eternal. And it's like, here's the thing. SSG being my favorite and Zach's favorite is because they gave it a fucking grappling hook, and it's really good for movement, and it's amazing. It's so good. Yep. Flaming meat hook. So good. Yeah, it's really good for, like, yeah, it's really awesome, because you could use it to, like, kill a, a fodder enemy and get some armor back instead of having to use your flame belch on one guy. You can preserve your flame belch for groups of enemies. I use flame belch a ton. I use it a ton. Flame belch is really key to some of the gameplay and higher difficulty, what I've seen, because armor is very important in Doom Eternal. You really need armor. Otherwise, you get your fucking dick sh dick cut off by whiplash, and it's just not good. <laughs> um, yeah, but I agree. SSG ballista is really cool, but I'd say SSG and honestly, I'm probably gonna have to go with the probably have to go with the plasma rifle. Actually, those two. Oh my god. You want to talk about another weapon that got ridiculous, ridiculously good? It's the fucking chain gun. Jesus Christ, they gave it an energy shield. <laughs> Fuck that stupid rotating mod. That thing was stupid. Fuck that thing. Yeah. I I don't miss the rotary thing. Giving it an energy shield is so much cooler, especially when you fully upgrade it and you can fire the energy shield and fall through demons. 
That's so good. So good. Yeah. Ah. Uh, in case you couldn't tell, folks, we both love Doom Eternal. <laughs> Favorite super weapon. Oh, okay. There's two. Watching well, no, just three, actually. Excuse me. Okay. Personally, spoilers, by the way. Spoilers. The Unmake. Love the Unmake. It's so fucking cool. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. It was a demon weapon that used uh, the same ammo as Plasma Rifle and the BFG. And had its own design. But they brought it back in Doom Eternal. And they made it Maker technology. And it functions differently, but also kind of similar to how the original Unmaker works. It's, it's, oh my god. The fact that they brought that back makes me so pleased. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here's, here's a cool thing. The BFG is like, I'm gonna kill every fodder enemy in the room and also stun heavy. While the Unmaker is like, I'm gonna kill every heavy and en heavy enemy in the room because I am really good at focusing fire on. And also, you can kill fodder enemies pretty well, too. The I love that. I love that. The Crucible is really cool. It's like the chainsaw in a sense, except it's a it's it's like it's like a hell lightsaber. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, the crucible is really cool. Personally, I'd say it's I'm not a huge fan of it personally. I really love it. I love the design. But in terms of the gameplay, I think it's a little boring compared to everything else in the game because it's basically just I want to kill this enemy instantly, fuck off. And that's great, right? But at the same time, I kind of enjoy fighting them normally more than just having a button to instantly leave them. And that's just because I really like the combat of Doom Eternal. But I still like the Crucible. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I only ever use the Crucible on the Tyrant, the Baron of Hell, and the Archwild. That's usually what I use them on. That's it. Like, everything else I usually just take out normally. And and it's especially good for the Tyrant because the Tyrant's a fucking bullet sponge. And it's like, well, I can just chop him down like a tree and he's dead. I don't have to deal with him. <laughs> and, um... You can use it to kill the Doom Hunter. I actually did that earlier today. You can kill him with the Doom. You can kill him with the uh, with the Crucible, which is really cool. And you can't kill the Marauder with a cru Wait, can you kill the Marauder with the Crucible? You can't. You can't. Are you sure? You've tried. Okay, I'm gonna have to try because I'm curious. Because <laughs> if you can, that's awesome. I don't think you can. You could try, but um. Okay, so, yeah, overall, if you want my opinion on Doom Eternal, just a sh short summary, better than Doom 2016 in every way, in my opinion. Uh, the lore in the story is actually really cool. I didn't really care about the lore and story that much in the last game, but in this game, I actually give a shit. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I like the maker stuff, and I like the fact that they, uh, spoiler alert, tied in the rest of the Doom games into Doom Eternal. And it's cool. Yeah. And here's the thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. The thing with uh the like Doom 1, 2 and 64 is that the story isn't the focus. So if you're going to play those for story, you're not going to get too much. If you want to play it for the game, you're going to like it a lot. But Doom 2016 and Eternal is when story became more of a focal point. And 2016 was almost like a reboot, but it wasn't a reboot. Like the story was kind of like, yo, this is the Doom Slayer. Like, who the fuck's the Doom Slayer? But then Eternal's like, this is the Doom Slayer. It's the Doom Marine. 
from 1, 2, and 64, because remember, he stayed in hell in the end of 64. So he's a crazy fucking nutcase. He wants to kill demons all the time. And yeah, he got given godlike powers from the Seraphim. And it's like, oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I have I can't play Asian Gods yet because it's time to switch, but I'm looking forward to it. And um, yeah, yeah, I know. So yes, Doom Eternal is great. If you haven't played it, play it. And I really hope you enjoy it. Like seriously, it's phenomenal. It's very very fun, and it's without a doubt one of the best FPS games I've played. Period. Mm. Without a doubt. Excuse me. And I think that's going to wrap it up, unless you um, have anything else to add. In fact, honestly, just because we haven't really had a good spat about Doom Eternal, like a, like a good two-hour-long conversation, we might just do an episode of this where we just talk about... <laughs> that might happen at one point. Just, just a special episode. Spe a special episode talking specifically about Doom Eternal. And maybe just the Doom series in general. I don't fucking know. Who knows? Yeah. All right. So there's that. Sorry, future me, for having to timestamp this. You're going to hate me because that was probably like a good 20, 30 minute conversation. Um, Zach picked that for me. We've only got, let's see, one, two, three, four topics. We've got four topics left. It'd probably be better to merge them together. Just. Just so it's one episode, because if we do two parts of an episode, that might be a little fucky for, like, one listening experience, considering it's... Because you just merge the files together, it's no big deal. Because there could just be a big old technical difficulties with you twerking on the screen. <laughs> you know, it'll be okay. Anyways, um... <laughs> um... Yeah, exactly. A la Half-Life. A la Half Life. Oh no. Okay. I'll keep you to that. So, okay. We got four more topics here, honestly, and it's 4.06 my time. But, um, yeah, well, let's, uh, let's, 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 let's try and move. Let's try and move the pace up a little bit, just because we don't want to be here all night. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is my last topic, because the, 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 we got two co-topics in Zach's, and this is my last one. Let's go ahead and talk about the fact that Cry of Fear kind of just casually came back at it. And so there's a lot of information here. There's a lot. But I'm going to try to get into it at a base level. I just want to make it kind of minimum. So basically, the short version of it is, Cry of Fear is getting a new update. It's getting a new winter co-op campaign, as well as something else, I think, along with Cry of Fear 1.7. Winter co-op campaign was supposed to come out uh, last month. It got delayed, so it's going to be coming out later uh, this year. And uh, there was also an update that added, uh, re-added the MP5, or like, not re-added, uh, revamped the MP5 and uh, gave it new animations, new sounds, a new model. and. Uh, now everybody can use the MP5. Because before, it was a mapper exclusive weapon. But yes, new Cry of Fear content's on the way. Which is crazy, because me and Zach were like, man, wouldn't it be cool, you know, if Cry of Fear got an update? We were playing in that one stream the other uh, a few months ago, and would you look at that? It happened. It fucking happened. So, that update also did some bug fixes for the co-op, which is nice. Uh, but anyways... Yep, thank you, all the new folks involved with that, along with Andre. Uh, basically, 1.7, uh, I'm in the I'm in the Cry for Development server, as a side note, because um, I was trying to do, I was doing some sound work for a custom enemy that was going to be in the Wonder campaign. It's going to be in there still, but um, the, uh, we got kind of far with it, but I think ultimately it's just scrapped at this point. We're not really worried about it. But um, basically, uh, 1.7 was going to be adding a lot of stuff, uh, sus, a lot of stuff from the Source Engine remake, 
And I know what you're thinking, what the fuck, remake? And yes, there was a Source Engine remake. Now, there's also, you can also, yeah, there is a video of it you can find online. Because Andreas streamed the, uh, I guess, alpha? Or like just the work in progress version of the Source remake he had. Um, and he was, basically, they were going to be porting a lot of stuff from uh, that remake into original Cry of Fear. Now, a recent announcement made by Andreas actually clarified that they're not really going to worry about that now because I think what happened was he was he was expecting more more modelers and stuff and is a little shorthanded in regards to like just the team. There's not a ton of people, so the scale of 1.7 is not going to be as big as it was, but it's still going to be a pretty big update, I think. But it's not going to be like we're going to re we're going to add brand new models for all the guns, and it's that's not going to happen anymore. I don't think it's going to be happening anymore. So, bit of a shame, but at the same time, looking forward to it. And yes, Cry of Fear Remake is actually confirmed. It got moved from Source to Unreal Engine 4. And most recent announcement, Andreas spoke about it. He said that it's not a huge priority currently, but it is some. It is a project that they have that they're working on. And me and Zach have been talking about a potential Cry of Fear Remake for years. We've been like, yo, wouldn't it be cool if there's a remake, right? And turns out there was a remake in development. But the reason it got canned for the Source Engine version is because the lic- to get a license for the Source Engine was very expensive. And Andreas was like, you know what? This isn't worth my money to do this when I can just go work on Unreal Engine 4. So he work- he's working on Unreal Engine 4 now. And he's been some couple of work in progress shots of stuff, like some of the environments, and it looks fucking beautiful. The Source remake, by the way, looked really good. For a Source game, it looked fucking crazy good. So, that's the... Yeah, so that's the short stick of it, basically, is new Cry of Fear content. Thank God. (laughs) Whenever I get back to making... Whenever I can make a content, I'm definitely covering all the new stuff. I get another reason to remake my Cry of Fear playthrough. Um, and there's a remake, which is definitely far, far off, not anytime soon, but there is a remake, and I'm very happy to hear that, and, uh, he also has talked about wanting to do an Afraid of Monsters remake, potentially, so, who knows, we might get that, too. Yeah, so, I I found out all of this, like, months ago, I think it was back in June of last year. And I fucking nerded out, and I was like, Zach, look at this shit! And Zach's like, holy shit! And we were just nerding out. It was great. It was so good. Oh, not not, not in June July. It was like October or something like that, I think. Around that time. But, yeah, so it was fucking crazy. So cool. Love it. Yeah. If it wasn't obvious, Cry of Fear means a lot to me. I have like a attachment to Cry of Fear. And it's more like more like a, not like a personal, but it's like an emotional attachment. Like I don't know. <clears throat> Something about Cry of Fear just means a lot to me. I don't know what it is. I I, I Yeah, and I think what it is is also Andreas. I really Andreas is a very inspiring person to me. Like he he does so much on his own. Like he's a he, he can code. He makes he writes music. He does so much. He does art and everything. It's like man, this guy is talented. And it's it's very awe inspiring because you look at somebody like that. And it's like man, I could do the same shit if I just put my mind to it. And his music and just overall sound design is most is the biggest thing for me. I love, 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 love the Cry of Fear music. It is fucking haunting. It's super well done. It's so- yeah. Give. Yeah, if you somehow come a- come come upon this, Andreas, fucking, you are awesome, dude. You mean a lot to me. And yeah, I hope you're. I hope you're doing. Well. Oh. And- <laughs> Yeah. And another shout out, another shout out, but I just never mentioned for Cry of Fear is the guy who voices Simon. His name, I'm, I'm going to butcher this. I'm sorry. It's like Stig. St- he, he, I, look, he's Norwegian. Something like that. I'm sorry. 
I cannot pronounce his name. I'm just gonna call him Stig because that's the first part of his name. He's another he's another uh, inspiration for me because he, yeah, he's another inspiration for me because like I'm I consider myself like an amateur voice actor and I really want to get into music and yeah, uh, amateur sound designer too, and. Yeah, just Stig's journey as a voice actor through Cry of Fear is very apparent because very early on you could tell he's not super comfortable with it. But by the time the game ends, he has fully embraced the character and it's beautiful to watch somebody grow throughout a game. And I love that. And he's a very talented voice actor. And yeah, he, he that's another inspiration for me because it's like, man, I just, this dude, this voice. Uh, oh. It's awesome. He does a very good job. Like the like the like the ending the ending fucking dialogue for all the endings is very well done. It's super well done. Okay. Personally, uh the best ending is great, of course, but honestly, I like the worst ending. I really like the worst ending. And I think I like the worst ending so much because the way Stig uh, performs or just acts out the dialogue. It's very convin it's very convincing. And it's very it's almost scary because you can he really captures a deranged, sick person who feels like the whole world has basically betrayed him. And in his mind, the only way to redeem or like fucking help himself is to kill everyone that's trying to help him. It's sick. It's fucked up. And I love how convincing it is. That's what it is. I think that's why I like that ending so much in regards to the acting. Stig does a very good job. Like, I don't, like the one line I always remember is when he was talking about basically saying that they all lied to him. Like, that's what he feels like. He's like, they lied to me! Like, it sounds so fucking, ugh. And, of course, the ending line of, I hope whoever finds this, you know, is haunted by my dead body while I scream, while I scrape my brain matter off the wall. Fuck you. Like, that is just, Jesus Christ. It's fucked up. <laughs> it's really dark. Now, he, of course, he does a great job in all the other endings, too. But that one is the one that's like, God damn, this guy's a voice actor. That's impressive. Very impressive to me. Oh no, the secret ending is funny. <laughs> oh, you? <laughs> Get back here! Get back! <laughs> yeah, this shit's funny. Oh man. Yeah, uh, go play Cry of Fear. Seriously, it's great. But, um, yeah. Basically, just wanted to mention kind of went in a tangent about Cry of Fear and why I like it, but but that's the short stick. New content after, like, six years, and there's a remake in the works. Fuck yes. So happy. I love it. I would like to talk about it more, but we should probably move on, because I don't want to be here all night. <laughs> <coughs> yes. Yes. Hope you all do well. Hope you all do well. Yep, after you. Pick one. Oh, oh fine. I'll pick one. All right, fine. Gosh. All right, so, okay. I suppose we can talk about this real quick. I, I'd like to talk about it more, but honestly, throat's hurting. So we're probably going to keep this brief. Uh, let's talk about Back for Blood. Because this was announced, what? Um, shit, this was announced. This was this was announced like a while ago, but then they got like a full blown trailer uh, last month at the Game Awards. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been known about for a while. Yeah, but basically the gist of it is, um, it's a spiritual, it's a spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead, and it's kind of like a Left 4 Dead. <laughs> In a sense. It's very cool. Yeah. 
it's not a Left 4 Dead 3. It's a spiritual successor. It's very similar to Left 4 Dead. It's obviously supposed to be it's obviously supposed to be like, hey, this is like Left 4 Dead, except this is from Turtle Rock, you know, the original folks who made Left 4 Dead or who came up with Left 4 Dead before Valve bought them out and bought it so they could make so they could take and make Left 4 Dead as their own. So yeah, Valve hasn't made a Left 4 Dead sequel in over 10 years at this point. So Turtle Rock is like, fine. I'll do it myself, and now we have Back for Blood. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very much a Left 4 Dead. Very much a Left 4 Dead game, in a sense. Mm. Mm hmm So, basic, yeah. Yep, that's the gist of it, basically. And, uh, yeah, if you've played a Left 4 Dead game, you basically know the gist. It's, four, it's a four-team cooperative zombie shooter, basically. And, you know, four players. And it's got special effect, just like Left 4 Dead, which is pretty cool. And another thing I wanted to mention is the reason we're talking about this is if you've watched if you've watched either his channel or my channel or you've watched our co-op videos, you know how much we like Left 4 Dead. So you can understand why all of us were sh why me and him were both like fucking shitting our pants at Back for Blood because it looks fucking good. It looks really good. Which is cool. Yeah, and people did some digging, by the way. There actually is going to be eight characters in the game, kind of like Left 4 Dead 2. There's going to be a, four, four, a group of survivors and another group. So, that's pretty cool. Mm. See? Didn't know that. Zach, Zach has done more research into this than I have. I basically watched like the whole Game Awards trailer and everything. And Zach has been clearly a little more into this than me because I just haven't done a lot of research. <laughs> so. Yeah, the special effect in that game very much remind me of kind of like merges of a special effect from Left 4 Dead I'll mixed with the original ideas. Like, uh, what was that one? One? The ho the hockey? The hokey? Whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> Do the hokey pokey and shake it all around? Um, yeah, that thing is like a merge of the spitter and the hunter. That's very much what it makes me think of. Oh, yeah. Cause th th that's the one with four arms, isn't it? Yeah, that, yeah, that's right, yeah. That one is the one that stands out to me the most, and I'm like, I saw that in the trailer, I'm like, oh shit, that's like a fucking hunter. <laughs> that's what immediately caught my attention. Yeah, which is kind of like an unused behavior for the hunter. Cling to a ceiling, which is pretty cool. Yes, exactly. And what, there's, there's like, what? There's the fucking... What was that one? It's like the Charger? I don't remember what it's called. The Bruiser, yeah. It very much looks like the Charger. Very similar to the Charger, in my opinion. Got the big ol' arm. You know, that, that, that's like the biggest thing. He's got the big ol' arm. <laughs> and... Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Oh no. Does it attract zombies like the boomer bottle? Or is it just like spitter acid? Oh no. Fuck that. It hurts you and it makes zombies attack you. Oh no. <laughs> That's mean.
Oh, Lord. That's cool. I, I like that they merge them into one thing, and it's that's that's pretty cool. I actually don't know much about this one. Can you inform me? Oh, the cut, the cut, Left 4 Dead one infected, a screamer. Oh, okay. I'm interested in this. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, I see. I see. Interesting. Huh. Cool. That's not. That's something I've noticed is that a lot of the special effects in this game is like, let's merge the concepts of the ones from Left 4 Dead into like one creature. That's kind of cool. I like that. Mm hmm. Isn't there a, a really tall one too? Yeah, that's kind of like the tank of the game, isn't it? Yeah, and it reminds me of the taller from Cry of Fear, like just because of how big it is, you know? I think I know what you're talking about because there's concept art of it. It's like a really huge looking zombie wall looking thing. It wasn't called Wall of Flesh, but like it, it was like the like it was called like the Wall or something like that. It was like this really huge towering zombie that would block projectiles. I think something like that. I don't remember. It's just wow, a lot of a lot of cool shit in Back for Blood. I'm looking forward to that game a bunch. Yeah, it's very much a tank of the game. It makes sense to me. It's it's it sounds like a tank in a sense. So the ogre is the tank, Snitch is the witch, plus Screamer, and what was the other one? This the boomer and the spitter combined. Can't remember what they're called. The wretch, the relch, and there's the hockey, hawker, that thing, which is like a hunter and a smoker. And then there's, is that it? Or is there something else? I am the bruiser, which is sounds very much like the charter, in a sense. Except that he's just like, I'm gonna fist you. <laughs> so, yeah. Less, less charger, more like, I'm gonna punch the shit out of you and steal your lunch money. Yeah, like a beefy boy. Yeah. And I also saw that there's like a card system? How does that work? Oh, okay. Excuse me. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. So it's kind of perk deck sort of thing in a sense. Interesting. That's kind of cool. Okay. That's neat. Oh boy, that's kind of cool. I like that. That's kind of that's that's neat. That's neat. I like that. That's cool. That's pretty neat. A lot of neats coming for me. That's cool. Yeah, I like it. Ooh, yeah. See, that's another thing that makes sense to add because it's like you get like a. I imagine you get like a, like a like a like a uh, like a laser sight or like a like a scope or something like that, you know, some sort of thing. I wonder how a silencer would work in that, considering how crazy the zombies. Oh well, yeah, that's usually what silent or suppressors do. Yeah. Well. Fuck me. I wish I uh, did a little more research, but honestly, I'm hoping that by the time Black for Blood comes out, I have the hardware to play it.
that would be great because I would love to play it day one. Or at least within like a couple weeks of the Yes. Yeah, we we still play Left 4 Dead, and then fucking Left 4 Dead 2 is 10 years old as well as Left 4 Dead. We still play the shit out of those games. We're all about it. We love Left 4 Dead. Oh, there's plenty. There's plenty. There's a lot of content on uh, his channel. I also did some of my, did some stuff on mine. Um, excuse me. Yes. Might do, might do like a little episode. We might just do an episode uh, talking about Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2, and Back 4 Blood. I think that'd be kind of fun. Uh, just like a comparison and, you know, what we think of the game. You know, how, how well it's going to do compared to the success of Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 or something like that. I don't know. Motherfucker, if they add a jockey-like thing, I will uninstall the game. <laughs> <laughs> I hate jockeys so much. Look, if there's one thing I would I would remove from Left 4 Dead 2, it'd be fucking jockeys. I know they serve a good gameplay, you know, feature. But holy shit, they never die when you think they're going to die. They're so hard to hit. And by hard to hit, it's like, well, you just need to aim down. No, when they get on your back, they're little sluts. Fuckers are so annoying. Ugh. Yes, you do. Because he's a little shit where he's a, he's a jockey. Oh, fuck. Ooh. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so real quick, since we're done with Back for Blood, we're pretty much wrapping that up. Um, we got two more topics here, and they kind of correlate with each other, but we're going to start with the fact that we've been doing the ret we've been doing uh, CF videos again. And I know that there's a few people, I know there's a couple folks that um, actually have been really enjoying us playing with Nexus. And what I personally want to say is that's great. I really like that. But I just want to let you know that we're not going to be exclusively playing with Nexus. You know, we are going to play base CF still, but that's just a forewarning, you know, just letting you know, we, we started with base CF, we're going to play more with base CF, but I'm pretty sure, I'm not too sure, we haven't decided yet, but personally, I feel like after we finish JPCP, we might go back and do base CF at some point, but honestly, the biggest, the biggest thing, I think the smartest thing for us to do is to actually go back to Metroid, not because we need to finish it up. As much as I, uh, want to keep playing CF, and I really enjoy it. Uh, Dreadnought is something we've been working on for a while, and I feel like what's... We haven't really been playing that much because of, one, lag and stuff, and two, I think me and you are a little burnt out on playing main... like, the main wads. Like, Ultimate Doom, Doom 2, uh, TNT, and Plutonia. I love those, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, we've played them so many times. We've played them with Vanilla, we've played them with Brutal Doom, played them with Project Brutality, played them with CF. We're a little tired of playing this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it might be a bit before we finish Dreadnought, but I think once we finish Dreadnought, we're probably going to play a lot of custom stuff for a while. Like, we're probably going to, we might we might go back and play Brutal Doom with like I don't know fucking Hell Revealed or something I don't know something stupid. Yeah, exactly. Like we'll <laughs> we'll go back and do something like that. Fuck, we might do Metroid Dreadnought with a custom map. You know, I don't know. It, there's there's um like Dreadnought Metroid Dreadnought is very fun, but I think me and Zach can agree it's best enjoyed in small in small in small in short bursts. Because it gets kind of tedious after a bit. Like, it's fun, don't get me wrong. But 
when you play it for like a couple hours, it's like, oh my god, I've been clicking mouse one so much. Send help. <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong. I love, like I said, I love Dreadnought, but we are just kind of burnt out on it. As same, and we're still kind of burnt out on it. I feel like, and it, I, a good chunk of the reason is not just the gameplay mod. It's also the fact that we've been replaying the cus the the official Doom wads so much, a lot. I practically know TNT evol Evolution Map 20 more than my fucking sister. That's how many times I've played that map, and I hate it. <laughs> I fucking hate TNT. Oh, uh, I hate so many fucking maps in that. Like, ah! Uh, uh, but, yeah. So, TLDR. We're gonna do... We're probably gonna play more CF soon. We need to finish APCP first. I wouldn't Nexus. Don't worry. We'll get to it. Uh, base CF, we're gonna do more of that because uh, me and Zach surprisingly really enjoy playing CF <laughs> and um, we'll do that, of course. What Mark Silent One? Yeah, we could bring Mark in there, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, uh, we could because I also know a group of people who also play it as well. Uh, I also know the guy, yeah, the Clusterfuckers. So, you never know, maybe we get a recording session where we get uh, JJ, Silent One, Fedelum, Fluffy, Ca uh, Captain Modern, and me, and you, in one session. That'd be fucking crazy. That'd be a lot of people. And, and fuck, and fuck, um, even Aurora, uh, which some of you might know as Rose, from my older videos. Um, yeah, if, if you remember Rose, which she's uh, Aurora, that's what she goes by now. Um, I, I, I even got her into it. She enjoys it. We, we, we don't play it that much because she's usually very busy, of course. But, um, yeah, we really enjoy playing it. And I, we're going to play more games, of course. Like, I, like I'm going to play more games with Zach once. I'm happy that she enjoys it. And she's even going to try to get, it seems like her wife is interested in playing it too. So, you know, I might be playing it with Minette too. Who knows? But, oh, Jesus. TLDR. We're gonna do more. We're gonna finish Dreadnought. Zach's gonna rate me, apparently. Um, <laughs> we're gonna do more Nexus. It's more like we're gonna finish JPCP than probably do base CF. And we're also gonna try and finish Dreadnought. At least TNT Metroid Dreadnought? Soon-ish. I don't know how soon. Maybe we'll... Uh, I think the camera auto adjusted. Yeah. No, yeah, no problem. Sorry. Uh, but I that's pretty sure what we're gonna do. I think that might be the plan. And just as a side note, we're glad that you're enjoying uh the CF videos because what I've noticed from what Zach's put out since the original CF uh video for all it actually gets a decent amount of views. So hey, I'm glad you guys enjoy it. It's nice. It's fun. Mods are a blessing. They really are. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna we'll play more Brutal Doom at some point. Uh there is supposed to be a new version of Brutal Doom that's been cooking apparently. So and that new version of it is gonna be the last version. So who knows? Maybe uh we'll play it before the new version comes out, or we'll come back to Brutal Doom once version twenty two comes out. Who knows? I don't know. Time to smash! Yeah, exactly. Oh, rip it down, rip it down, rip it down your guts out. Is that a pancreas? Um. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Don't. <laughs> I must kill them all. All right. Um. Yeah. Yeah, we've got uh, one more thing to talk about, and that was Zach's last topic, and that is, uh, <laughs> yes, um, and it's the last thing is basically just a couple, we're just talking about some ideas and some plans that we have, or Zach has, and I have. I'm gonna let you go first, actually, because I'm curious to hear what you, uh, 
I want to say. Let's go right ahead. Mm -hmm. basically yeah finish up your projects that kind of just got abandoned because of other things going on excuse me yeah I know that you're interested in working on stuff like that Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I wouldn't mind writing stuff. I enjoy writing, but honestly, the big thing I would like to do is sound design and music. That's what I would love to do for that'd be really fun. Mm. Keep it a secret. Let's just keep it a secret. It's a it, it's a uh let's just I'll just say this. It's a project that me and him it's based off of a story that me and him have kind of bounced around between each other before. Primarily when we were younger, sometimes we still fuck around with it, you know, just to like, if we're, hey, you know, let's add something. Right. But um, yeah, I'll just, let's just keep it at that. Let's just put it that way. But um, yeah, there you go. Hmm. Yeah, you're working on that right now, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's doing quite a bit. Doing quite a bit. It's a long way to put it, yeah. Uh. Yeah, I understand. Yep, there she is. <laughs> yeah, she she was an older cat, wasn't she? Gotcha, gotcha. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> That's fair. I don't blame you. Fusion can be irritating. Don't blame you. <laughs> SAX that you're talking about? Yeah. 
Fuck SAX. I, uh, you got me saying it. Fuck me. Fuck SAX. Yeah. Damn it. Ugh. Jesus. <sighs> God. I agree. Yeah, you should watch that. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I agree. Killed by a box. Raging. Just lots of fun stuff going on in that. I'm... We'll get there. <laughs> also fair. Very fair. Yes. Shit don't work. Yeah, I did some editing for some of uh, his. Uh, when I have better, uh, I'll, I'll I'll get into it with um when I get my turn. Go ahead, keep going. Mm hmm. Oh boy. I think I know what's uh, I think you told told me about it. Yeah. That's a fun one. That's a fun one. For sure. For sure, man. He doesn't he doesn't want to get raped by mannequins. Just so you know. Which is fair. You know, for a minute, I thought you were talking about SCP for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh. Oh, okay. I don't know why I thought you were talking about SCP. Ignore me. Yo. Yeah. Oh, the multiplayer game? Uh, maybe. At some point. I wouldn't mind playing, um... The base SCP game, actually, at some point. It'd be kind of fun. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, don't kill him. He's an innocent. He doesn't deserve to be killed. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's a good one. The series is good. All right. Well, let me put it this way. Um, <laughs> there's a lot I want to say, but honestly, to me at this point, it doesn't really mean much. Priest. Um, but I will. What I will say is. I don't know when I'll be able to do content again. I have a lot of things I want to do. There's a lot of things I want to do that I've previously discussed um, in other videos, other multiplayer videos with Zach. Uh, I think even in episode zero, I talked about it. Um, there's a lot of things I want to do. There's a lot of stuff I want to do. And again, the only problem is I don't have hardware currently. 
and and I'm not gonna keep complaining about it and not even not even not even complaining about it, just talking about it because I think everybody knows that now who is a fan of my content they know I'm out of commission and I've been out of commission for a long time and I'm ashamed I'm ashamed to say that it's been that long because I this is a whole this could this could get really deep but I'm gonna try to keep it simple and just say that I've been doing a lot of personal growth and maturity just maturing uh the past year primarily um I've grown up quite a bit I feel like and the past in, in like 2018 and 2019 um there I wasn't really doing much really um it, it, it it's kind of a weird time period for point especially 2020 but 2020 and 2021 i think 2020 was one of the biggest years for me as a uh, personal so yeah i don't want to say that's an excuse to say why i don't have a, a new new computer right or i have a new hardware but i feel like what it depends on what you believe right uh, to me, I feel like what has happened to me, there's a bigger meaning to it. And the bigger meaning to me is that I needed to go through the shit I've gone through the past couple years to grow as a person. So, yeah, I apologize for getting kind of deep on you here, but that's just kind of how I feel about it. And um, I have plans, of course, like I said. and. There's a lot of things I want to do. And there's also a big thing I want to do. Um, and it depends on me getting hardware and content. Now, I will be... I'm very confident that I will have... I'm... I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of flip-flopping. But I feel personally that I'm... I feel very confident that I'm going to have hardware. I don't know when. But I'm pretty sure that this will be the year that I come back. I've got to... Uh, come back for regards to content and um i'll start trying to put stuff out again now i can't promise this because well quite frankly i'm not very good at keeping promise <laughs> it's just one way to put it um but i hope so that's the hope and i know i've said that a couple like a year or so ago, or a year and a half year and a half so ago thank you um i hope so and if it happens expect me to come back and do a lot of the ideas that I've spoken about publicly, such as redoing Cry of Fear, um, finishing up Half-Life, um, lots of ideas for video content, and another, this is the big thing, I'm going to keep it kind of brief because I don't want to talk about it a ton, is I want to get into music. And I don't know if I'll be um, doing music on that channel. I might make a new channel specifically for music. And the reason for that is because that channel of mine is pretty much gaming and voice acting and I don't know if I can lump music into there without causing audience fragmentation, right? I don't know. We'll see. But I, the past year or so, I've gotten really into sound design in regards to Doom modding, right? For CF specifically. And I've had a lot of fun with it. And I've always really liked music and just vocalist stuff in general. I want to get into music primarily as a vocalist. And I also do kind of want to get into it as a producer in a sense. But Primarily, I want to be a good vocalist, and I also want to be a good voice actor, too. So, it's all in that kind of sphere. So, that's a big plan for me. I still want to do gaming videos, of course, because those are fun. I enjoy doing those. I really enjoy making that content. It's very fun, usually. <laughs> but, um, my main focus, I think, is probably going to be music, sound design, and voice acting. That's... That's probably where my direct that's probably where I'm gonna take my channel in the future. Now, when is that gonna happen? I don't know. It's a matter of it's a lot of different things in regards to that. Hardware and just me getting into music and voc voc just voc vocal shit in general, you know? So um when that time comes, I hope that you stick around with me. And even if you're not into music. I do hope you stick around at least just to give it a try and see what you think. 
Um, if you don't, that's totally understandable. Or if you just want to watch the gaming content, that's also totally understandable. But I just hope that uh, even though I didn't really have a huge audience, the people that remember me um, still enjoy my content when I come back. Because um, at the time of this recording, last I looked, I, I am like right, I'm about to hit 2,000 subscribers apparently. And it's all because of one video <laughs> in particular. And yes, it's that. And also another video of mine blew up recently that was like a short clip thing. And um, the thing here is that I honestly am not very happy that those blew up. And I know that sounds rude of me to say. That sounds disingenuous and a bit um, ungrateful. Now, I'm happy. Now, I'm grateful that they blew up and they got a ton of views and people enjoy it. That's great. But that's not fulfilling. That's not, that's not, that's not fulfilling to me. I would prefer something I put, pour my heart and soul into to be enjoyed by people instead of just some video that I made in 20 minutes. You know what I mean? I think, I think some, I think artists and just creative people in general might understand where I'm coming from here, where it's like, I want to be known, I want to be known, and I want people, not that I want to be known, let me reward that, I want people to enjoy the shit that I really pour my heart and soul into, and the stuff that I really care about, which at this point is music and sound. Like, if I can, if I can please a ton of people with the music, that, to me, I've, I've, that's fulfillment. 700,000 views on one video of a thing I did in like an hour maybe with uh, questionable editing. Um, that's not very fulfilling to me, as I said. Like, it's kind of like, hey, it's awesome that there's a ton of people who like this, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, I barely put any effort into this. You know? And that's kind of a problem with YouTube in general is that pe the low effort content usually is the thing that gets swooped up by the analytics and really, like, pushed. When, like, now, debatable on who you ask and what you think, but I think that doing proper, entertaining game videos is hard to do. And, you know, people who put a lot of time into it, like Zach, you know, he does a lot of recording and stuff. He does a lot of videos and shit. Excuse me. I mean, he takes a lot of time out of his day to go and record content because, one, he likes to, and two, he wants to entertain people. Stuff like that doesn't really get rewarded. Now, I'm not saying you should just get immediately rewarded, but what I'm saying is if you put a lot of effort in, I would hope that that gets noticed. Instead of just, I made this shitty little thing, it blew up. Woo! Two million views. Now I can get a skin in Fortnite. That's not fulfilling. That's, that's fucking, it's fucking stupid to me. And I'm not attacking people who, you know, get popular for that and they continue to ride that wave, ride that wave of success. More power to you. More power to you. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you do do what makes you happy. If that makes you happy, have fun. But to me, that doesn't make me happy. It's not what I want to do. I don't want to be known as the fucking... I don't want to be known as the fucking guy who made a Black Mesa video. And it got really popular. And I also don't want to don't wanna be known as the guy who reposted a fucking cosplay. Like a four... 10 second or like 14 second video of two cosplayers, Metaton cosplayers, which I know don't even get me start. Don't even get me. Started, but, and it just, I want to be known for stuff I care about. Like, I know I keep saying I want to be known. I don't mean that in the way you think I mean it. Like, I just want, ah, it is hard for me to explain what I want, but I think some people can understand where I'm getting at right and if you think i'm kind of if you if i'm coming off if i'm coming off like an ungrateful asshole or something yeah if i'm coming off like an ungrateful asshole i'm sorry you know i'm grateful for the that video blowing up and all the subscribers i've gotten from that and the other, that's awesome but again i would prefer to um you know make something that actually requires a lot of effort and something i care about and just a little video I made in an hour. And, yeah. Yeah.
Not just Zach, yeah. Zach has been doing content way longer than me. Like, I only did content. I only actively was making videos for, like, three years. That was it. And I, I, I have a lot, like I said, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. And I'm keen on continuing that. And just at the end of the day, I want to entertain people. And I want to make sure that I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I don't, very, I don't really enjoy making something like that a Black Mesa video. Like, yeah, sure, it's fun. But I... Like, it's something I'd only make every once in a while, right? Every once in a while. Just, yeah. Again, I'm sorry if I sound like an ungrateful asshole. But that's just... It's just how I feel. It's just how it is. And generally, even though it's like, oh, yeah, when I get some new hardware, I want to come to YouTube. Some days, I... Some days, I don't want to. And it's because of the whole... The way you reward it on... And I'm not saying I won't. But I'm just saying that some days... I don't really want to, you know? So, if I do come back to make content, which I'm pretty sure I will, because I do enjoy making content, right? Uh, just, I don't don't expect it to be as regular, regularly uploaded as the old days. Like, if you're, like, your older viewer of mine or something, don't expect them to be a daily upload like I used to do. It'll definitely be much more stretched out. And the content will definitely, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, be more varied. But, um, yeah, I'll probably go into more detail whenever I'm able to do a new video on my channel when I have new hardware. But at the moment, that's pretty much the gist of it. And I apologize for talking your ear off, Zach. But, um, that's, uh, that's basically the gist of it. So, yeah. Yeah, you. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So. All right. Yeah, just, you know. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that, that, that pretty much, yeah, fuck. Yeah, this kind of goes. This kind of goes hand in hand. We're talking about plans. Um, we have talked about doing a channel where we both upload con to it, content to it, um, which I think would be pretty fun. Uh, but this just is an this is just an idea, of course. Now, if ever happens, if ever happens, we'll we'll let you know because we've been doing a lot of video content for a while. Whether it's us recording at the same time or it's just you know me recording solo, you know it depends. So. Yeah, um, just either way, it's an idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a, that's not a pick. Yeah, root. Yeah, Achievement Hunter, Rooster Chief, that sort of thing. Yeah, it'd be something like that, except just me and Zach. And, um... Yeah. J just for... Of course. Of course. Because I know that um, Aurora and Minette, they they do streaming, and uh, they, uh, they asked me if I would do editing for, like, high for a YouTube channel, and uh, I wouldn't mind doing that at some point. If I have the free time, you know, when I have hardware to do it, I'm like, yeah, sure, of course, because I don't mind editing. I, editing's kind of fun. I don't like to do it all the time, but I, I like to do it when you know, I'm in the mood for it, of course. 
And, uh, you know, I like to edit for Zach sometimes. And I wouldn't mind editing for them. And I also wouldn't mind being in some of their streams. Like, I, like I don't play Warframe or anything. Right, but I wouldn't mind being a part of that little, you know, little click, <laughs> hanging out, playing stuff with them. You know, that'd be cool. George, yeah, he's all about Warframe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I might. <clears throat> it's all about Yu-Gi-Oh, man. <laughs> all about fucking Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah, we we love you. We, we love you, George. I know we don't talk as much as we used to, but I still you're still a good friend of mine, George. You're a cool guy. <laughs> Take that up in private. Um, yeah, I think that kind of wraps everything up. Unless there's something else you want to add. I mean, honestly, I think I've covered everything I wanted to. Um, I know when you mentioned. What's up? Go for it. What is it? Again, um, just, 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 I apologize for talking your ear off, but I hope you understand what I mean about what I'm talking about in my content. And again, I'll clarify it once um, I'm able to do another video. Oh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the that's the salvage computer you found, isn't it? Yeah, it could be a cool video to uh, crack crack it open and look inside, see how it looks. That could be a cool little video. Never know. Uh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to see it. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Fucking dust. The worst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whew. A lot of hard drives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. Kind of like CRT TVs. It's like you really don't see them too often anymore. You know. It's not just, you know, technology evolved. So... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Shit. Shit's wild, man. It's wild.
Mm, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, that's one way to look at it. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. We're at the end of the day we will be our own fall, most likely. <laughs> it won't be the sun or something that kills us us killing each other <laughs> so yeah I don't know why we're suddenly talking about like a public service announcement <laughs> in the middle of our uh, PC discussion right oh shit <laughs> uh, I, tangent it's fine I, I had a tangent earlier it's fine Yeah, you could do some cool shit with that. I'm interested to see see what's up with it. Yep. There it is. Yep. Yeah, I, I I'd probably recycle them if they're still good. Like I would use them as like a backup part or something if you need to test a new thing or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that that and that and that is why. You don't hook it up to a fucking wall. <laughs> or not a wall. You don't hook it up to the to your internet, just in case it's one of those fucking malwares that, you know, infects a network. <laughs> yeah, I, I you, you know what I mean. <laughs> but, um, fuck. Did you just say brain pop? Oh my fucking god. You know what a brain pop is? Holy shit. Wow. I haven't heard. Dude. Jesus. I feel old as sin. Holy fuck. What was the name of the, what was the, name of the robot? Moby? You remember that? Oh my god. Tim, yeah, oh my Bro, why well, yeah, I may remember something that's weirdly nostalgic to me from my childhood. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I was in elementary, that was that was the sh Shit, everybody loved Brain Pop whenever they used Brain Pop for, like, a course or something. Everyone loved Brain Pop. The shit was a jam. Oh, man. Yeah. Man. That's crazy. You gotta make me... You gotta, you gotta, oh, you gotta make me think about Brain Pop. Holy fuck. Oh, Lord. 
fucking brain pop. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm still over here fucking freaking out that you know what brain pop is. Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Wow. I don't know, man. I'm pretty sure Bethany knows what it is, too. But, still, damn, that's wild. Like, shit, you gotta make me remember that. Mm hmm. He'll do it. Hmm. <sighs> I can't believe it. Ugh, it's the worst. Mm. There you go. Mm hmm. Motherboard. Yeah. Yeah. You do. Yeah. The more the moral of the story here is take care of your computer. <laughs> Yeah. Now, if they if they sure just don't know how to take care of it properly, that's understandable. But if you know how to take care of it, and you're just not doing it, and then you're complaining about your PC not running well or something breaking, then you're kind of just being an, an idiot. <laughs> so, um, I hate to end this great PC conversation, but. Um, we kind of went off into a tangent here. I mean, this is related to a future plan that you have, but we did go on a tangent and we've, I think, I think we've been, this episode has been going on. A, I don't know how long, but it's been going on for a hot minute. Let's say that. Um, maybe, m might be three. Um, so I think we should probably go ahead and wrap up here because it's late for me, starting to get kind of late for you. Um, and yeah, we, we didn't intend to be up. We didn't intend for this episode to be very long, but you know, we, we had a lot of stuff we want to talk about. And I feel like next time we might make the episode a little, uh, might condense the topics down or we might just talk about one thing next time. We will see. <laughs> Excuse me. Fucking hell. But, um, Ooh, that's a that that's a good topic. That's a good topic. All right, but anyways, I think we're gonna end it here. Um, Zach, is there anything else you want to add, or <laughs> research about stuff? Wise, wiser words have never been. Not just research. Research is good. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Knowledge is power. You need n knowledge. Usually. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I agree. That's a good, that's a good message. Make sure you research your shit. Uh, in regards to me, um, again, basically, uh, thank you for, uh, listening to my tangent. If you listened to my tangent earlier and I hope you're enjoying the podcast. And again, we don't have a set schedule for this. It's kind of be whatever, whenever we want to fuck around with it. Right. Want to record, but, um, yeah, uh, I hope we hope you enjoy it. If, um, there's more people gaining track, if this gains more traction, we might try and do it more often. 
either way, we're still gonna we're still gonna do this. But um, yeah, I think I'm actually gonna sign us off here because I'm fucking dying. I'll sign myself out real quick. I'll let Zach do his thing. But uh, basically, all I have to say is thank you for watching episode one, and hopefully, you've watched episode episode zero if you haven't feel free to check it out uh we'll probably have a playlist of this at some point once we have yep it's on it's on this same channel that you're on here if you want um i'm pretty sure once we have more than five episodes we'll make a playlist for this thing and uh we'll you'll be able to watch them and um yeah hope you enjoyed this episode of spitting shit with the bros or the bros cast and i am this ex my throat hurts. I want to die. I really need to piss. And uh, thank you so much for watching. <laughs>